what's going on there. Guy to talk to about the Southern Conference is none other than SoCon John Hooper, who joins us here. He writes for MidMajorMadness.com and uh, covers the SoCon and knows every least little thing about it. Uh, to begin with, I guess I uh, want to talk a little bit about the the last time we talked uh, was Monday. We talk every Monday at 1.30 here on Tri-City Sports Now, and I'm Marky e. Bilson, but to me, the statement game of the week had to be Wofford and UNCG. Wofford, I, I mean, how do you limit the Spartans to 43 points? How do you beat them by, what was it, 35 or whatever uh, whatever the uh, exact total was, 70-odd points to uh, 40? What went on in that game? Was that Wofford is that good or was it just the complete off night for UNCG when they suffered their first Southern Conference loss of the season? I think it was uh, a little bit of two things. I think Wofford's really good, but I think part of it too is UNCG, um, to me, came out really flat. And they got down 14 0 before you knew it. And. Um, you know, I think that UNCG is one of those teams that if you get them behind by double digits, I think it's hard for them to, to respond maybe than other teams in the league. But um, I think that, that Wofford since early in that ball game was, was impressive to me. And I wasn't sure how uh, they would defend Alonzo and, and especially Isaiah Miller, who's been playing well as of late, but they did a nice job with both of those guys. And really, I mean, it, it came down to UNCG just did not shoot the ball well at all the whole game. So um, I think they shot something like 22% from three for the game, like four of 19, and then uh, they, were, they were below 40% shooting from the field. And so I think that when you look at that and then you look at Wofford's numbers, um, how they shot the ball, uh, it was just a, a recipe for disaster. And let's be honest, I mean, UNCG had a 17-game a uh, winning streak, home court winning streak, and that was like the sixth longest in the country. I always say that, that it, it's, the longer those things go, the harder they are to defend. And um, they won, I guess, four straight against Wofford. Um, there were a lot of things working against you and DG actually winning that game. But, yes, Wofford played really well, and they, they've shown that um, they're the, clearly the best team in the league so far. Well, Wofford, yeah, undefeated, cream of the crop right now. By the way, it should be mentioned that UNCG on Saturday rebounded against 15-3 and Furman with a 10-point 89-79 victory. But I uh, wanted to ask you, uh, Wofford, why do you think Wofford is the team to beat this year? Is it Fletcher McGee? Uh, is it uh, Mike Young? What is it that has made Wofford, which figured to be up there, but I think everybody thought it was going to be UNCG's league. ETSU was picked third, uh, and they're supposed to be really competitive, too. Why is it Wofford that has become, to this point, the cream of the crop? Well, I think it's become... Um, I, I think Cameron Jackson is really the key. Um, he's managed to stay out of foul trouble in most games this year. And when they have him in there, it's a, sort of a picture poison. Um, you either guard Wofford on the per perimeter and kind of give up something underneath, or you know you, you sell out to stop Jackson and then you give up the three-pointer a lot of times to, to Hoover and McGee. So I think that Wofford is extremely versatile in the way that they be you either inside or outside. And, um, you know, when you look at a lot of teams in this league, um, they usually have one of the two, but they don't have both uh, consistently. And Wofford has done that consistently um, throughout the season. I think one of the things that Coach Young has done is he's probably added some depth down underneath uh, and given, you know, uh, Jackson some support and I think that a couple of the young guys last year like Aluma have stepped up underneath and, and really started to be more of 
a scoring presence rather than just exclusively a shot blocker on the on the offensive end. So I think that helps um, that helps Jackson a little bit, and, and teams can't often just focus on Jackson. They they have to account for other guys uh, underneath the basket, and I think that's been a really a, a big um, portion of why. Wofford has been the team to beat so far, and I think that um, they're very physical. I think that uh, a lot of teams in this league are either physical or they're not. There's no real gray area, um, and I think their their physicality um, has been among the best in the SoCon this year. You know, I, I think that's one of the things that some people may be um, surprised about with this Wofford team is how physical they really are. They sort of remind me of some of uh, the old Davidson teams um, under Bob McKillop when they were in the league. Interesting. And when you mentioned the physicality, of course, they beat ETSU in the season opener in the Southern Conference. But when the two teams meet in Johnson City on February the 7th, uh, Lucas Gesson, the seven-footer underneath, you mentioned, uh, you know, uh, in defending them uh, and playing Wofford, you know, do you want to uh, take down their inside game or do you want to attack the out? Uh, Steve Forbes is now playing... Uh, both Lucas Gesson and Milan Narmus sometimes at the same time, that could that's something to watch in the rematch with Wofford next month. Of course, this Saturday, it's UNCG and ETSU. We're talking to SoCon John Hooper, and I want to mention it. I'm going through uh, my teamrankings.com email on Sunday. They always send me an email uh, the day after an ETSU basketball game. And they talk about the percentages to make the NCAA tournament. And they say that ETSU has a 25% chance to win the Southern Conference tournament. Okay, I can see that. I mean, you've got uh, UNCG, Furman, Wofford, and ETSU all battling for the crown, plus the field. I understand why it would be 25%, but then they say a 57% chance to make the NCAA tournament, which means they're kind of thinking all right, at-large berth right here. Is TeamRankings.com crazy? It's never happened in the SoCon. Or could this finally be that year where, yeah, the SoCon puts in two teams into the NCAAs? I mean, um, I've heard arguments both ways on it. I will say this. Uh, in my lifetime, you've never had or at least that I can remember, four teams that were as highly thought of as, as ETSU, UNCG, Furman, and Wofford um, at the same time. So, you know, in years where there's been maybe a, a chance for multiple bids, I think um, you would have needed, let's say, okay, so a Davidson team with Steph Curry, the year they lose to College of Charleston in the semifinals, they probably needed to make the championship and lose in the championship. And then that's a way they, to get two bids. But really, that's um, that was in a year where there were two teams that, you know, one of them it had to win the league and the other one, um, Davidson, would have been mm -hmm. probably high enough with like a 17-1 or 16-2 conference record to garner a bid despite losing the championship game. Now, losing before that, they wouldn't have been able to get in. But this year is a unique situation. Um, you know, you're going to have probably four teams with 20 wins uh, in the conference tournament and, and 20 wins that are, um, you know, pretty highly thought of wins. Uh, some, I know, like with Furman, will have like a quad one win in there with, with the win over Villanova. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of, uh, wins that were respectable, I guess, in the non-conference. And I think that's where the difference maybe this year is. Um, I look at UNCG's win over Louisiana Tech. That was a, a really highly thought of win, um, for, for not only for UNCG, but with the, for the Southern Conference. Um, you know, Citadel's win over South Florida was big. Um, if you look at what South Florida is doing right now. So um, there are a lot of wins that are going to look bigger as the season goes along, 
especially this non-conference win. And that's going to probably keep the SoCon's reputation pretty high all the, all throughout the season. So I think... Um, I think you think it could happen? conference will only be magnified as the season uh, goes along. He's SoCon John Hooper. Read him on midmajormadness.com. Back with some final thoughts and finishing up some teases after this.